Hi everyone, uh, welcome back to my channel and uh, this is episode, no not an episode but this is part two of an interview which I did uh, previously with Muzi so it's uh, the part one is in, it's in the channel, if you haven't watched it you need to watch it first before you get into this one. So in today's uh, part two we're going to be deep diving more into uh, property, property business, how Muzi started his and all that. So yeah Muzi, welcome, give us a quick intro. Another, another quick another intro. one. <laughs> <laughs> um, thanks. Um, hi, my name is Muzin Duna, and I invest in property in the West Midlands predominantly, and I've been doing this for the past five years. And Zimbabwe to to Burger <laughs> King, yes, to Burger King, <laughs> and all sorts. But um, so yeah, like Tawo mentioned, you might want to watch part one first before we delve into this one. So um, yeah, yeah. So without of. Is it feather or Jew? Feather? Whatever it is. Yeah, that yeah. one, that word. <laughs> <laughs> that word. I think it's further ado. Without further ado, let's uh. jump into it. <laughs> yeah, so Muzi, I know property is a big, big industry. I know yeah. it's a you know it's a big industry. And if people when you think, oh yeah, I'm in property, they think, oh, that's estate agents buying and selling properties. They've got different uh kind of connotations surrounding property. Can you give us like your niche in property? What exactly you specif uh specialize in and why you chose that niche? Yeah, um, I think it's a good question actually, because um Whenever we start talking about property, there's a lot of people that want to invest in property. Yes. And one of the reasons why they say, I can't invest yet is because I want to raise money. I need to save up a money on deposit. Yeah, money because, always yeah, comes, yeah. Yeah, it always comes in. But what a lot of people don't realize, which is where we were as well, yeah. was there's so many different ways to invest in property. This is my long-winded way of answering your question. Yeah, yeah, no, go niche. on, go on, because um, they need the full explanation. Yeah, so, yeah. And I know you with the explanation. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently, I talk too much. Um, he's probably going to edit a lot of things that I'm saying today. But um, yes, I, I just want people to understand that there's so many different ways of investing in property. Ideally, mm -hmm. the situation, when you class it as investment, you're looking to make money out of property. And basically, there's lots of ways of making money out of property. It's not just about raising a deposit, purchasing it through a mortgage, and then renting it out. That's not the only way. So my niche, so to speak, is where we actually generate income from other people's properties rather than having to buy them. And that's a strategy called rent to rent. Yes. yes. Now, this is the concept of taking on a property that someone else owns. You pay their rent and then you rent it out in a different strategy that will generate more income than what you're having to pay to the landlord. Yes. So that is basically my niche. And there's certain different ways that we can actually do that. Uh, one of which is the Airbnb thing, which is which you're the expert on. <laughs> and so um, that's one well, of I the ways. From you, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's one of the things that we actually do with them, and we also work with corporate companies, some people that do supported living, and um, let the properties out through that, where we can generate more income than what we're having to pay. So that's my sort of niche, and the the specific business that we're focusing on at the minute. Okay, no, that's great. That's great. So you mentioned obviously controlling the properties. Let, let's deep dive into that because I'm on TikTok. So the mean every time I advertise this, the people are always on my case. Oh, it's not illegal. <laughs> you know that's illegal. Stop doing it. You scammer. You landlord. You this and that. You know, but I'm I'm just controlling another landlord's property. So can you give us like details to, to say, look, this is allowed, hotels do it, big companies do it, yeah. you know, and small people, individuals, anyone can do it. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I tend to use the example of big companies like Tesco. Yes. Um, so a lot of people believe that every Tesco that you walk into, Tesco actually owns that building and they don't. So Tesco do the exact same thing. Someone owns the warehouse, someone owns the building, Tesco mm -hmm. rent that building from the owner <coughs> and then they then start selling their products in that building. They don't actually own the building, they just control it. So it's a similar case and you can do that for residential properties where you actually pay the landlord their rent 
and yes. then you rent the property out with something else. So use an example of what we class as HMOs, yes, which is houses in multiple occupancy. Okay, yes, right. So you're renting a five bedroom house, for example, and the landlord is asking for a thousand pounds. I'm keeping the numbers simple. So he, landlord asks for a thousand pounds, and you're paying a thousand, and then you rent each room out for five hundred pounds. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now you're generating 2,500 from the five rooms yes. and you're paying the landlord a thousand. You then have to pay the bills, maybe call it 500 pounds. Yes. And from that, you're generating a thousand pounds. Yeah. So a thousand pounds, that's like profit into your pocket. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. So you can do that legally and it becomes legal if you sign the correct paperwork. Yes. Okay. And so just to make it simple, you've got an assured short hold tenancy. AST, you call yep. it an AST, yep. right? And that's the one that you 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 sign if you're the tenant living in the property. You're the tenant who's living in there. You're paying the rent, and the landlord takes care of that property. That's the normal way of renting out a property if you're living in it. So for anyone who's renting right now, you probably have signed an AST. Yes. However, if you're taking the property for a for a business or for, for the reasons of generating income yeah, from a it. commercial use, let's a say. A commercial use, basically. Yeah. You're signing a different agreement. You're signing a management agreement or a corporate let agreement, a commercial lease. They come with different names. Yeah. But ultimately, you're saying, I am not... I'm not living in the property. I'm in control of the, of property. the property. Yes. I am responsible for the whoever lives in the property, but I'm not living in it. Okay. Yes. yes. So if you sign the correct paperwork, it makes it legal you then actually can run this property where the landlord is getting what they're asking for, you're getting what you need, and the people living in the property are getting what they need, which is a property for them to live in. Yep. Nothing wrong with it. No, very true, very true. I think a lot of people's views, I uh, think, oh, you, you, you do it behind the landlord's back. The landlord doesn't have to know. You exactly, know. Can you yeah. just elaborate on that, like to say, look, other landlords love this strategy. And Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. And that's a very good point. <laughs> and I think this this is your right. This is where a lot of people think it becomes illegal because um the landlord hasn't got a clue what you're doing. Yeah. Um I I'm confident enough to talk about this because some of my landlords are actually watching this yeah, right yes. now. <laughs> they know exactly what we're doing. And I would recommend for anyone who's starting as well, who's considering doing this, don't hide away what it is that you're doing. Just because you're front. generating more money doesn't mean the landlord is interested in making that money that yeah. you're making. A lot of the They'll landlords... Like, let's share the profits. Let's share the profits. <laughs> it's my profit. No, no, it's, no, it's not the case. You'll be surprised. A lot of landlords, they just want a peaceful, quiet environment where my house is being taken care of, my yes. rent is being paid. Done. I'm not interested in making extra money because that comes with extra work. Yes. Yeah. So... They've done all their work in purchasing the property, right? They're probably running their own business somewhere else. Yes. They're not focused on, on managing houses. Yeah. Yes. So if True. someone like us who come to take the property away, where we take away the, the worries of maintenance, yep. the worries of any issues that happen with the, with the neighbors, the worries of chasing rent every time, yep. the worries of the property being damaged, yep. that's what we take away. Void period as void well. Void periods as well. Yep. Those are the pain points of normal landlords and you're taking all of that away from them yep. and you get compensated by making more money. And yep. it works for everyone who's involved as long as it's open book, yes. everyone is aware of what's going on and everyone is being compensated for the work that they've done. No, no, that, that's very that. true. That's very true. Yeah, so it's like it's a win-win situation, you Absolutely. know. So you you paying the landlord, and and what, what you forgot to mention as well, some, some people, some landlords are accidental landlords they didn't want Absolutely. to be landlords, so they probably they've inherited a property and they're happy with, with that fixed rent, etc. You know, 100%. they don't want to hear anything from you. So with these company led agreements, which Muzi elaborated on, they can be like three to five years agreements. You know, mm -hmm. so imagine as a landlord, you're getting five years, that's sixty months rent. You know, yeah. every month without without fail, no headache of saying, oh, the light bulb is switched off or anything <laughs> like that. <laughs> Yeah, those yeah. are the issues that we then take on. Yeah. So uh, with some of our HMOs, the tenants will fall out and they'll call the landlord yeah, and say, say oh, oh, someone stole someone stolen my chocolate bar, someone yeah. has eaten my food in the or fridge. Or someone stole my laptop. Someone... <laughs> 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 so, so those kinds of problems are what we're taking away from the landlords essentially and um uh, i think you you mentioned the term win-win yeah. i don't think it can be a deal 
if it's not a win-win. Of course, right? yeah, if, yeah. If yes. someone is not feeling like they're winning in that scenario, yeah. then it's not a deal from my point of view. That no, means it's not. So it's someone not. is losing out. At some point in the future, they'll feel, they'll feel sort of like hard done by, and yeah. they'll they'll be resentful about the, the no, situation. No, very, very true, very true. You you know what? Today I want us to to be touching on the rent to rent strategy because yeah. obviously that's what you specialize in, especially like the accusation. The uh like the early startup for someone yeah. who's who's trying to actually get into that uh rent to rent uh strategy, whether they're renting it out on Airbnb, HMOs, mm -hmm. or you know, so how do you like so people are asking themselves questions like, okay, cool. So if this is actually legal, so what's my first step? What's my first step after yeah. watching this uh video podcast? What should I do? Love the question. So um there's there's the element of the process, right? But I usually ask people to start with the mindset. Okay. 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 And, I, and I'll talk about why. Mm -hmm. So there's the simple process in terms of, well, you need to get educated first, and then okay. you need to go straight to the acquisition process. Okay. And once you've acquired it, you need to focus on the setup process. Okay. The setup is actually married with the with the marketing yes okay yes. so setup and marketing need to happen at the same time yes and then you've got the management yes. and then the last stage is the scaling okay so okay. now that you've done it all it's a six-step process yes um uh, i made this up <laughs> <laughs> so you're not necessarily gonna find it anywhere else and if it doesn't work you can blame me but the first stage is the mindset yeah and then you've got the education okay and then you've got the acquisition process the setup and marketing put together the management and then the last one is scaling scaling okay. is the element of actually let's do it again right okay. so now that this is work let's do it again so the first part about it is the mindset yes and, let's and, go and on mindset. I, say, I say on the mindset element it's mm. very important to understand why you're doing it okay. okay i would never ever recommend anyone just says right i'm gonna go start investing in property or i'm gonna just do rent to rent to generate income simply because Muzi said so mm -hmm. okay or mm -hmm. tao has been talking about uh, it yes so that's great you need to understand something that is important for you okay yeah a very strong purpose for you and the reason i say that is because we've seen this quite a lot happening where people start in a, a new venture, yes. right? Let's talk about property for now. Yes. You start in property because someone else has been doing it and it looks like they're doing great, so I'm going to go do it myself. Mm -hmm. And then you start hitting the challenges because yeah. those challenges will come. Yes. They come heavy as well. Yeah. As soon as you face the first big challenge, the first question you're going to ask yourself is, why, why the hell? Doing this? Yeah. Why the hell did I get myself involved, involved in this? In this right? yeah. And if you don't have a strong purpose behind that, when you ask that question, that's the point of failure because mm. you're going to think, sod this, I'm going back to where I was because <coughs> your, 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 your purpose or your why was not strong enough. Now, this is a question you ask yourself at home, stand in front of the mirror and ask yourself, why am I doing this? Yes. And you find that reason before you get started. Now, if we follow that process on, now this mindset process doesn't mm -hmm. stop at that point. It's an ongoing forever. You keep going at it. Yeah. Okay. So m mindset is mm -hmm. is more linked to like personal growth, personal Absolutely. development. Yeah. Absolutely. Okay. But so so g give someone like a one mindset tip, one book, or, or mm -hmm. something to actually take away today now and actually implement do yeah. you recommend a book podcast or something yeah absolutely so because we're talking about the purpose behind why you're starting it i'm going to recommend a book called start with why by simon sinek okay mm -hmm. um there's a cheat where you can watch a ted tedx talk that he did mm -hmm. which is about 20 minutes but i'd recommend you read the book mm -hmm. it's it's the concept of understanding why you're actually doing what you're doing mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. the reason behind it and also making sure that it connects with who you are yes because that's what will take you through i yes. mean a lot of the things that we talk about the skill sets the processes that we're going to go through yes. that's 20 percent of the logical aspect mm -hmm. 80 mm -hmm. percent of it is about connecting with who you are what is important to you and how you can bring that into your business. Nah, that's good. Yeah. That's good. I like that. I like that. Uh -huh. hey, hey, before we go any further, you should try to be a pastor, you know? <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> see this guy. <laughs> Every time I start talking to this guy, I always worry about what he's going to say about what I'm talking about. Okay, so we've done my set. I'll, I'll link the the Start With Why book in the description. So just check out the description so you go and buy the, the correct book. Otherwise... <laughs> You end up buying a bootleg on the marketplace. <laughs> so yeah, so I'll link there in the description. Then uh, you, your, your number two, when you're doing this with your fingers, there was uh -huh. education. Education, well, yes. That was after mindset. Absolutely. Okay, hit me with education, Absolutely. brother. So the education element is very important, but there's a caveat to education. Mm -hmm. So you really do need to understand what it is that you're going into. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we're talking about rent to rent, for example. Yes. Get some information about it, right? You, you've you heard what we've spoken about today in terms of rent to rent. Yes. Get a bit more information. Get to understand what that means, how it works, um, if it can work with the situation that you're in, and get a bit more information. However, the caveat with education is you don't want to use education as what we class as positive procrastination. Yes. Right? Okay. Yes. Where you're constantly reading books, constantly getting content, constantly looking for information. Mm -hmm. And you use that as I am making progress, but you don't actually go and just do it. Yeah. Okay. So you don't take action. You don't take action. Mm -hmm. So we talk about the fact that you can read so much about driving until yeah. you need to get into the car and car. start driving. Yes. You can read so much about swimming, yes. but at some point you need to jump into the pool. <laughs> yeah. So a lot of people that I know, and and we started together, and I still actually speak to some of these guys yes. who are still working out how to get started. They're getting information. Oh, I just need to get more information about this. I need to get information about this. And they haven't started. Yeah. No, you know, they haven't taken action. Yeah, and just pull the trigger. Sometimes it's, I know what people say is like, yes, get educated to avoid the mistakes, etc. Mm -hmm. But sometimes it's actually more beneficial to actually throw yourself in the deep end and learn from there. Absolutely. You know? You would have a little piece of information you've got, just jump in the deep end. Now, I'm not saying the deep end of a swimming pool. You can't <laughs> swim. <laughs> You still learn. <laughs> still learn. You may learn the hard way, but you still learn. But but absolutely, it's it's yeah. it's um we, we say experience is the best teacher, right? Yeah, of course. Yeah, of course. So you yeah. won't get experience if you don't actually start that, taking yeah, action. Yeah, yeah. And 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 I say that I have to say that because it's very important that you find people actually over learning, um, rather than taking action. Okay. So get okay. an understanding of how it works. And then just get in and do it. Because the other thing about education is some of the information yeah. changes, yes. right? Regulation course, change. Right. So what you learned a year ago is different to what it is now. Yeah. And you think, oh, now there's a new regulation. I need to read about that. Yeah. Oh, now there's a change here. I need to yes. read about that. Yes. Before you know it, it's 10 years and you haven't actually started, started doing anything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? So, so, so yeah, I just want to touch on um, the people maybe who are learning, yeah? Mm -hmm. But they don't know, like, okay, I've learned enough. This is enough for me to take action. So, because other people, maybe it's just fear or like, um, like negative mindset or things which are holding them back, mm -hmm. beliefs, you know, to say, oh, they don't know. Like, you know what? What you know now is a lot to actually mm -hmm. pull the trigger. So, how can they measure? How can they put themselves on a measure to say, look, I know enough for me to yeah. take action? That's a great question. Mm -hmm. And the sad part about it is. Yeah. That doesn't exist. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There's no there's nothing where you can say, right, now I know enough. Because this is exactly the reason why the people that we trained with five yeah. years ago are still learning. Because they're waiting for that point where it says, right, now is the time for me to actually jump in and there's, start there's doing no, it. There's no, like, the Big Ben is not going to go on like this. There's, 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 there's no, no bell if, that's going to ring to say, now yeah. you've got enough information, go yeah. into it. That lady is not going to sing. No, no one is going to sing. Nothing. That doesn't exist. I always recommend that get some basic information, mm -hmm. something that you can, you can explain it. Um, so someone told me, my mentor told me that, if you get to a point where you can explain the process to a six-year-old, okay. then you understand enough for you to actually start yeah. doing something about it. I thought it, it was a five-year-old, but we'll go with six-year-old. We'll today. go with five if that <laughs> makes you feel better. <laughs> At the time that he was telling me about this, my daughter was two years old. So now I'm she's... like, ah, oh, crap. I'm going to have to wait until she turns six to try this. But ultimately, it's it's 
get some basic knowledge. Mm -hmm. There's not going to be a point where you think, right, now I know enough for me to actually take action. That that feeling does not exist. You're just going to have to 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 have faith in yourself. Yes. In yes. in tell yourself that I'm going to be fine. Whatever it is that happens, there's no losing. There's only learning. Yeah. Right. Yeah. There's all. There's no failure. There's only feedback. And anything that you get back, you might not. Failure is from your point of view, or disappointment, so to speak, is when expectations don't meet reality, and whatever sure. it is that happens, then. Your question is right. What can I learn from this? Yes. What is it that I can learn? You pick up the lessons and you go again. You pick up the lessons and you go again. So it's so funny how like number one, which is mindset, and number two, which is mm -hmm. education, are yeah. so interlinked together. Absolutely. You know, so it's like yeah. But when it comes to education as well, obviously there's paid education and there's uh, mm -hmm. free education. So someone watching this, I know like the path of least resistance is people don't want to pay. They'll be going for Absolutely. like the free one, mm -hmm. you know? So what are the downsides of free education? Know that I'm promoting paid education. That, yeah. That's the route which I went to. But what are mm -hmm. the downsides of that? I mean, the, the reason I say education and leave it there, I'm not going to say paid or free. I'm not going to say, you know, this is the person that you need to learn from. Either way, you just need to get educated, whichever way you want to get educated. Mm -hmm. There's ups and downs to either. Yeah. Right. There's not one that I would recommend. There's ups and downs to free education. There's ups and downs to paid education. It yeah. all depends on who it is that you're listening to. Okay. Um, it all depends on what information you're picking up, whether it's actually relevant or not. Um, a lot of the education that we tend to have about what we class as real estate, in the yeah. UK we call it property, Yes. a lot of people actually pick up information from America. And it's good to learn about the concepts, but you want to make sure that what you're learning is relevant to where you are. Yeah, okay? yeah it's applicable, lot, yes. It's applicable. So the concept, you want to understand that I'm only picking up a concept, and then when you bring it to where you are, make sure that it's relevant. You then understand the differences to, from what it is that you learned to what you've actually got now. And then you've got the element of paid mentorship, yes. right? Dependent on who it is that you're paying, depends what their um, motive is. Are they actually driven just by making the money or are they driven by actually helping you to People, achieve yeah, what you want yeah, to no, achieve? That's, that's yeah. very true. So yes. you actually get that by having a good human connection with the person that you're linking up to, the person that you're listening to. And yeah. then the ideal scenario is you're being mentored by someone that you connect with on a human aspect yes. more than the 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 their sort of like capability to teach you the logical side of things. Yeah. And then also the logical side of things that they're teaching you about is yeah. relevant to where you are. Yes. Okay. Yes. So you want a mentor who is doing what you want to do. Yes. Where you want to do it. Yes. If that makes sense. Yes. yes. Yeah. So it doesn't yeah. necessarily have to be in your gold spot area. Yeah. It, well, it, so it, if it you live in London, your mentor should, it doesn't necessarily have, have to, to live be in London. In London yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. But at least you know the regulations in London yes. are similar to regulations in England. England, yes. Yeah? So yes. you you are using true. a mentor who's investing in London and you're investing in Sunderland. Yes. But then the regulations are similar. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, rather than take on a mentor who is in Canada, where the regulations are completely different. Different. Yeah. 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 So it's it's also um, this is where you are at the start of it. Um, so also in terms of mentorship. The other thing I would say you want to try to focus on is not necessarily how much you are paying, mm -hmm. but understanding where you are, yeah. what information you need at this particular time. So I get a lot of people who are at the start of their property journey. Yes. They don't have that much money to invest in mentorship. They go to a seminar or they go to a property training company yep. And then they get excited about the mentor that is talking about commercial units. And, and, <laughs> and then they're like, oh, that's the one. One deal can change my life. And I'm like, well, yeah, theoretically, yes, it does make sense. That's true, yeah. And then they wipe out all of their savings to go with that mentor. Yeah, yeah. But then, and then they find out later <coughs> on that they are not ready for that strategy, mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm. And I think it's important to understand where you are, where you want to get to, understand the path between that. That's what the mentor is going to do. They are the the, the GPS, the sat-nav, mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. will take you through the quickest path to where you want to be. Yeah. However, let's yeah. also be realistic. 
you're not going to go from zero property experience whatsoever yes. to going straight <laughs> into building a hundred apartments on a piece of land. So let's, let's be realistic about what it is that we're trying to achieve. Take some sort of realistic steps into yeah. what you want to do and understand what the mentor that you're focusing on is going to help you to do. But hey, the mentors will tell them to, to have big goals. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> this is the other thing I was talking about where it also depends what the mentor's objective Motive is, what their yeah. motive is, yeah. right? If if I'm a mentor whose objective is to just make as much money as possible, my objective is to fill the room as much as I can yeah. and expect or trying to get everyone to believe that what it is that I'm teaching is exactly what you need. I'm not going to marry up with your expect, uh, ex experience. I'm not going to marry up with with where you are, I'm not going to be interested in that. I'm going to be telling you that this is what you want to learn right now. Yeah. Pay the money. No, for sure. Yeah, yeah, no. So I think my view on that is like, if you are on zero property and you want to start your journey, obviously you're going to start on one, whether your goal is to get to 100 or whatever, but you can go to like a um, mentor who's done about 10 to 20 deals, you know? Mm -hmm. You don't have to go to like the... Yes, you can go to the big companies who've done 100 deals, etc. you know, but obviously there will be a different uh, price point as well, mm -hmm. like, and all that kind of stuff. But if I was to start off again now from zero, I'll be looking for someone who's got 10 or 20 deals because that information is in the trenches, that person, he or she's in the trenches and uh, they'll be holding your hand, 100%. you know, whereas if you go to like a big company, you know, it's like, yes, you go to two days and... That's it. So that that's my view. Because when you're starting off, it's besides like the property knowledge, it's more on number one mindset, getting that confidence. You know, someone who's gonna tell you, yes, you can do it. You know, because sometimes you, you your mentor will believe in you more than you believe in 100%, yourself. Hundred percent. That's you usually know? the case. So yeah. it's more like more accountability, more coaching, uh -huh. and and uh -huh. that kind of stuff. Because. May, yeah, it's a cliche, but property is very easy. It's it's the technicalities are easy, you know. Anyone can do it, you know. <laughs> but it's like it's it's not like I mean, it's I think it's on the soft soft skills aspect, like uh -huh. that confidence, that self belief, and all that. Yes. I think that's uh that's where yes. most of the the bulk of the work comes in. I would say it's seventy percent mindset and thirty percent strategy. Uh huh. Uh huh. Yeah. We just as you were speaking there, that actually reminded me of something else to consider. Mm. Um, if the mentor is going to understand your struggle, and and I say that because it depends on the mentor's background, yeah. for example, and it's no surprise that most of my mentees yes. that connect with me the most yes. are people that are not from this country, who came from somewhere else, yeah. and they... They they actually do say, or oh, one of the things that we actually liked about you is the fact that you came from a different country. You were here as a foreigner to start with, yes, an, Im yes. an immigrant. Yes. So there are those challenges of coming into a new country, mm -hmm. new culture, mm -hmm. new settings, and and having to go through that first before understanding the concept of business, yeah. before understanding how you can actually generate income from other people's assets and all of that stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's there's an element of my personal journey that they can relate to. Yeah. You're also wanting to look at that person's personal journey. Can you relate to that? Yeah. No. Therefore, they will understand your struggle too. Yeah, it's it's funny how when you say this, you know, because when I was choosing like a mentor, I went to like a, someone who was an engineer because I'm an engineer. So it's always like people mm -hmm. go to someone who they relate with. Absolutely. Like, so someone like you can build a rapport with, you know, it's mm -hmm. like, if you're a father, you, you know, parent or like someone with kids, Absolutely. your own race, different races, it doesn't matter. But it's like, where there's that, like, there's that foundation to to build that rapport. 100%. Yeah. It, is, it is still a people business. Oh, so it, oh I'll we, we, say 90% yeah. people. Mm -hmm. like. it's, it's a people business. So you, <laughs> you, you tend to gravitate to people that you can relate to. So you can actually see yourself in them, so yes. to speak. Yes, yeah. yes. So that's that's basically how it works. And I'm, I'm hoping that what we've shared so far is something that actually helps in terms of the educational aspect and how mm. you want to look at the yeah. paid and non-paid Okay, education so we've system. covered yeah. um, mindset, we've covered education. What's, what was number three? The acquisition. 
So Ish, this yeah, is actually this going is in. now technicalities. Yeah, this is now the logical <laughs> aspects of it. This is the technical side. The, of it. The, this is the script. <laughs> 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 oh, that's the interesting one actually we're gonna go into that as well but the acquisition basically as it as uh, as a foundational aspect of it this is when you're going to get the property yeah um this is where most of the most people see it as the 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 aspect of success yeah. right so you can say i've got my first property success keys right. i've good. got the keys <laughs> the, the house the big smile and everyone jumps in to congratulate you. So yeah. th th that's the acquisition process itself. Um, I just want to point out, and this is what I was saying, actually on, on Monday and Tuesday, I was doing some mentoring as well. I was talking to some people who have been trying to acquire their first property. Yes. Um, a couple of them had been trying for three months, seven months, a, a very, various um, kind of time, 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 time yeah. skills, yeah. And they're feeling a little bit deflated. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Uh, the first thing I actually said then was it took me nine months to, for to you get to get my your first, first one. one. Yeah. yeah. It took me nine months. Mm -hmm. So that's one to make them feel a little bit better. That is, that's yeah. okay. It's 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 kind of normal to mm. to have a, a long period. But what I find more important, and we're gonna go through this as part of the acquisition process, is the success is not a destination. Okay, right. okay. Success is part of the journey. Okay. You succeed every single time you make progress. Yeah. Okay. So if I were to say So to who you, say that quote? Was it Moose and Duna? <laughs> <laughs> you, I'll take the credit. For okay, it. cool. Yeah, no, saw, that, that's saw, a good saw, one. That's a good one. <laughs> I saw yeah. it somewhere, but yeah, that's the, a good it's, one. It's true. Honest. Yeah. Like success is not a destination. Nation, it's yeah. not the point that you're holding the set of keys Jeez. that you can say, I'm now successful. Oh, no. 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 Success is in the journey. So everything that you do towards that goal that you aspire for, yeah. you have to celebrate it. Very right? true. If very I, true. if you've spoken to a letting agent for the very first time, whether you've messed up or you haven't, you've spoken to them for the first time, that is success. Yeah. Right. You actually but, pat yourself on the back for that. And when yeah. as soon as you actually give yourself a, a shot of dopamine for succeeding that way, yeah. it pushes you further and further forward. Right, nah, that's but true. if you focus on the fact that I still don't have the keys, hmm. you're not seeing the progress that you've made so far, and that way it will make you feel deflated, and you'll end up stopping. Okay, yeah. okay. So, so, so on that, yeah. To 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 add on that, like, uh, if someone is obviously there is taking time, or what what tips can you give them for them mm -hmm. to accelerate it? You know, is it, are they just uh doing the same thing or are they changing things? You know, what, what did you tell the yeah. mentees on Tuesday? Uh -huh. So on top of telling them that you are making progress, therefore don't beat yourself up. Yeah. It's also a numbers game. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So okay. if you've made 10 phone calls a week, yeah. Right. It's increased it to 20 phone calls a week. Yeah. Okay. The success rate is about 2%. Oh, wow. Okay. No, no, yeah. So, 2% of people that you're going to speak to are most likely going to say yes to you. Yeah. So yeah. if you've only spoken to 10 and every single one of them said no, make sure you try to get to 100 and maybe two of them will say yes. Yeah. Yeah. Now that, that's, you know what, when, when you're saying that, I, I thought of something which I saw on, on YouTube. Um, There's a, a guy, this is like a social media marketing agency guy, yeah? Yeah. He, 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 he's in the beginning of his journey and he wasn't like, you was struggling, struggling. Then he recorded the phone call uh, with like trying to speak to a client on, yeah. on live on YouTube. And uh, he asked for people like, where am I going wrong? Because I can't mm. sign up clients. That video has got about 500K views. He's got feedback. Mm. He's got clients now. You know, <laughs> So it's like sometimes you just have to be creative and think outside the box. You what know, else can and I do? What, what else, else can, can I, I do? If, yeah. I, if it's taking time, you know, like am I going to the estate agents letting agents saying yeah. the right thing should i go and practice in a different city or you know what i mean but just yeah. it's, it's about like being creative yes it can take longer it took longer for muzi but for you yes it can take longer 12 months even but like mm -hmm. in that 12 months are you repeating the same steps or are you also trying to like tweak navigate things as well yeah yeah, yeah. absolutely that's a, that's a really good point as well and um in, in in terms of being creative, so to speak. Yeah. So what we tend to say is, 
what's more important at the start of your journey is to increase your level of confidence. Yes. Okay. The quickest way to increase your confidence without anyone telling you is to actually succeed. Of right? course. Yeah. Is to walk into your first letting agent or make your first call and they say, yes, absolutely, please feel free to take this property. Here's a great deal. Yeah. And you walk out with the keys. That would be success to you. Yes. But that's unrealistic. Right? Yeah. That's that's rarely ever gonna happen. If that's ever happened to anyone, it's very rare. <laughs> right. And yeah. if, and we know that it's not gonna happen. So in 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 certain cases, most people are afraid of failure. Yeah. Right? It's the fear of failure, it's the fear of going into that letting agency and presenting something that you still don't fully understand. Yeah. Right. And then they laugh you off or they say no thank you. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And you walk away feeling deflated because you've been rejected. Okay. Now, that is most likely not going to build your confidence. No, no, okay? definitely not. 100% definitely not. Definitely not. Yeah. Now, because we're trying to build confidence, mm -hmm. confidence is built by the repetition. Yeah, right? reps. Rep repetition, repetition. So even if they do say no, mm -hmm. that's fine, right? Yep. You want to be in a position where you have learned to stomach rejection. Yeah. Okay. We say thick go skin. Right. You have to have a thick skin. Yeah. But then you have to understand that it's not a personal attack when people say no. Yeah. It just means what what you're trying to sell is not what they want to buy. No means not yet. Not yet or oh. next opportunity. Yes. Right. Yes. And so next opportunity. Next opportunity. So we we have this concept of go for no. This yeah. is another book, by the way. Go for no. And the idea behind go for no is. If we understand that, let's say, if we make numbers simple, 15 people out of 100 yeah. are going to say yes. That means 85 people are going to say no. No. Right? Okay. So instead of trying to aim for 15 yeses, yeah. we actually go for 85 no's. No's. Right? So what happens is if you give someone statistics and say out of the 100 phone calls you're going to make, 15 people are going to say yes. Yeah. If they make 20 phone calls and in the 20 phone calls they get 15 yeses, they're going to stop Yeah. because they've got their 15. Yeah. But if you say the target is to get 85 no's, every time someone says yes, it's now actually considered a failure because yeah. you want to get 85 no's. no's. What you're going to end up doing is you'll most likely make that the 100 phone calls and chances are you'll probably get more than 15 yeses. The idea behind it is yeah. you want to be in a position where someone saying no doesn't necessarily bother you mm -hmm. okay mm -hmm. but it's not a case of doesn't bother you where someone says no you're just like okay fine and you walk away yeah you want to be comfortable with someone saying no and you inquire so what is it about what i've just tried to sell you doesn't work for you okay okay, okay. yeah so yeah. we have conversations with clients for our airbnbs yes and conversations with landlords conversations with letting agencies yes. where we're trying to bring them in yes. and also conversation with investors yes that are looking to invest in our business yes. that say well no that doesn't quite work for me okay so that doesn't mean we just say all right fine walk away okay. we say okay out of curiosity what is it that doesn't quite work, work. right yeah and you'll get feedback that feedback will help you have a better I don't like using yeah. the term script, but then yeah. you have a better idea of yeah. how you present the 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 opportunity to yeah. the next person. The way you package okay? the opportunity, yeah. So either to the next person or back to the same person who said that doesn't work. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Because yeah. you might find that in your introduction, there's something that you didn't cover that they preferred you to cover. cover. And yeah. if they say no because you didn't cover it and you walk away, you don't have the opportunity to understand what it is that mm, they wanted to know. Mm, mm. So if they tell you that, okay, this is what I would prefer yeah. and you haven't shared that, and if you do actually cover it, you say, mm. well, actually, yeah, we can help with this aspect of it. And yeah. you might turn a no into a yes. Okay, okay, okay. okay. So it's, 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 it's more like how you position yourself and how you package it is also... 100%. And obviously I had like motivation, like don't give up. So if yeah. someone says no, don't say, okay, that's it. Delete their number, block their number. No. <laughs> <laughs> you can what? go back to that person and, you know. Don't take okay. it personally. Yeah. Oh, no, it's yeah. not personal. Don't take it it's personal. It's strictly business. 100% <laughs> is. 100% is. Okay, cool. But uh, it's, it's not easy. I mean, it's not easy. It's easier said than done when of I course, say, when I say oh, don't course. take it personally. When you make a phone mm. call to an agency, or even worse, when you walk into a letting agency... <laughs> 
and you walk in and you got your suit and stuff mm-hmm. you know you presented yourself very well and you're like yeah i want to do rent to rent so yeah. i'm looking for properties yeah and they say no jog on mate so, so, it's, <laughs> so it's, it's so funny like how you say this so so obviously i started my journey not on rent to rent but yeah. buying properties so i remember going to uh birmingham in the uh, estate agents and asking for a uh, 10% discount <laughs> all of them i'm like yeah it's, it's then i was like no i need 10% discount <laughs> And I was in la- the guy, the estate agent, is still my friend. Up and up to now, he's like, you know, laughing on the floor. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, wait, the, the book said <laughs> I need ten percent discount. <laughs> like, I'm not gonna view it if they let. <laughs> they, they <laughs> I need ten percent discount. Either that, or I'm not buying it. Yeah. Hey, but yeah, on, on my first acquisition, we got twenty. Yeah, so. <laughs> 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 I mean, sometimes it does work but um it this is the this is the other thing about the the acquisition process so you've got your education you have a a decent understanding of what it is that you're trying to do yeah and you present that but you want to be in a position where you show that you are giving value yes of rather course. than taking yeah. Yeah. yeah so one of the reasons why your estate agents were laughing is because you're going to take so yeah. i want 10 10 percent just right? yeah rather and that's than what the book can say though yeah the book said that. <laughs> <laughs> but, you get 10%. The, <laughs> but what so, is in it for the landlord what's so, yeah. in it for the landlord the, yeah what's yeah. in it for the seller, the seller what's in yeah. it for the vendor what's in it for the agent that you're speaking to, to as yeah. well right so this mm-hmm. is the other mistake that a lot of people make you go and present what's in it for the landlord when you're speaking to the agent yeah it's like the agent is there representing the landlord absolutely yes but what's in it for the person you're speaking to? Yeah, 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 I mean, of course. Naturally, we all have that. Like every single one of us has yeah. that. Anytime you have a conversation with anybody or if you're in a place or if you're in your, a group conversation, you're always asking the question, what's in it for me? Yeah. Right? Uh, you no, might not true. say it verbally, but you're thinking it. What's in it for me? And yeah. if you're not seeing value for you, you're less interested in being where you are in or in speaking to the person you're speaking to. Yeah. yeah. So so actually, f- funny you say that, yeah. So when you're actually speaking to the lettings agent, you tell them, like, look, the benefits to you are X, Y, Z, and the benefits to the landlord, do you make it clear or do you, like, cover it up? Like, what, what would be so your advice to someone? My, my advice is because, because as humans, we're not always open to what do I want. Yes. Yeah. And yeah. sometimes we don't even know what we want. want yeah, no, uh, <laughs> but we're not open to what we actually want. Yeah. So as you're presenting your idea, you're talking about what it is that you're looking to offer everyone. Mm-hmm. So you're touching on certain things that you know are going to be useful to them. Yeah. Right. So we're looking for a four or five bedroom house to accommodate contractors that are working in this construction Place, site. Yeah. yeah. What we then actually do is we take care of these contractors and any issues in the property, we actually manage that. Yeah. Right. We will still pay the 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 rent as it is. Yes. Now, as you're saying that, the letting agent is probably thinking, so you're going to pay the full rent, but you're the one who's doing the maintenance. You're doing the inspections yeah. and you're doing all of that. They might actually ask you, so what do you expect us to, to be do, doing? Yeah. Because that's what they do. Yeah. That's their job. job yeah. Yeah. And if they bring it up, you say, well, actually nothing. We just want you to transfer the funds to the landlord. That's a good point you touched on Mm -hmm. that, yeah? Because obviously the way you've said it is more like Mm -hmm. through storytelling. Exactly. Yeah? But like... No, no, no offense to letting the agents. Like, <laughs> no, no, no. All of them will actually get it to say, look, the, I've I've actually told your story, uh, listing the benefits, mm-hmm. you know. But will they will it actually click to some of them to say, look, oh, this is actually a good deal, or they'll be just back mm-hmm. in the mindset to say, oh no, yeah, you know. You know? Yeah. So like, which is like, if they are back in the mindset, you actually say, look, I've told you the story, and when you email them, you actually list to say. Look, guys, the benefits to you are X, Y, Z. The benefits <laughs> to the landlords, you know. So I won't be the guy to call you and say the light bulb is gone or any maintenance <laughs> below two hundred fifty pounds. I cover it, etc. You know. So yeah, yes, because mm-hmm. with storytelling, I, I always like to say, look, tell the story, you know. Uh-huh. But other people, letting agents, don't pick it up. Yeah, I know exactly what you mean, and um, the the remedy to that yeah. is to try to make sure you're presenting your package so to speak yes. in person 
right? Of so course. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say this. When it comes to communication, there's kind of three versions of communication. Yes. Right? One is just the words that you use. Yes. Okay? Okay. So it's just the words. And that gives you 7% success rate. Okay. Just the words. Yeah. Now, next one is verbal, where you're using the words and the tone of voice. Yes. That gives you 38% success rate. Okay. Yeah. And then the third one is the visual, right? Yeah. Where you're actually with someone in person or you're on a Zoom call. Yes. Where it's the body language. Body language. You can see what it yeah. is that's going on. You can hear what they're saying, their tone of voice, and then the words. And that gives you 55% success rate. Yeah. 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 Very true. Now, body the language reason, is powerful. Yeah. It's absolutely powerful. Yeah. Now, the reason I say you want to present this in person yes. is because not only do you present it in the best way to give yourself 55% success rate, yes. but you can also read the person that you're speaking to, whether they're understanding what you're no, saying. Or not, yeah. 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 Very true. So if you can feel or see in their face that they're not quite getting it, then you actually offer more. more or you yeah. even ask the question, does that make Makes sense? sense. <laughs> right? Is that is that sinking in? It, you can yeah. kind of get that. And then you know what to add or what not to add. Yeah. 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 And then you want to use emails and text messages as a follow-up to say, as discussed, yes. this is the information. And this is a point to people that think, right, I'll just send a lot of emails to a lot of agencies and hope for the best. No, no. Do not introduce yourself in an email yeah. because you're only giving yourself 7% success rate. Yeah. Yeah, no, very true. And mm -hmm. words, you know, oh, hi, I'm Tabo. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know, yeah, perception, Tabo. It, it's, <laughs> it's, 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 the, it's then left because we're yeah. all, all human beings, we're, we're creative, we're very creative and we're imaginative. So when you read something from someone that you don't know, yeah. you create their voice and you create their face. Of course, right? of course. And what you create, yeah. oh, this is the interesting part. Yeah. What you create in your head is is dependent on how you feel on the day. Yes. Yeah. So if, that's, um, if your wife has upset you on the day and oh, then you wow. get introduced on an email, you are seeing what you're feeling. Yes. That person is screaming and they're not very good looking. <laughs> yes. I've done the yeah. modules. That's called uh, unconscious and conscious bias, which Absolutely. everyone has got it. Absolutely. Everyone yeah. has got that, you know. So yeah. it's like... Obviously, even people are watching this, they're not judging us. You know, the minute mm -hmm. you click play on this video, you're judging like, oh, who are these two guys? <laughs> 100%. Whatever it is you're thinking, you've got conscious and unconscious bias. Yeah. And, and, and you want to give yourself, if you give yourself 55%, 55% is far better than 7%. I'll tell you that now. 100%. Especially if you're actually going to, to introduce yourself, yeah. right? You want to be in person. I understand that the concept of going to introduce something new in person is terrifying. Yes, it can be terrifying to it's you. It's scary. It's absolutely scary. But we have to remember we're using terms like uh, letting agents, estate agents, agents landlords. Yeah. Ultimately, These are they're people. people. Yeah, people. 100%. They're just people. I said it's 90% uh, right? people's business, you know. It, it really yeah. is. So we've covered mindset. We've covered... Um, education we've covered acquisition mm -hmm. is there you, are there any closing remarks on acquisition i know we went back and forth spoke yeah about i would i would say the, the closing remarks remarks is exactly yeah. what we've just mentioned that it's just a people business yeah. right so you want to understand what services you're looking to provide and remember that you're dealing with people put that together and that's what, I mean, a lot of people will say, this is your script. I'm not a big fan of a script. Yeah. Right. I'm, I'm more of a person who believes that <coughs> you want to understand what services you're providing mm -hmm. and present it to a person in the best version of yourself. yourself. Yeah. Because yeah. people connect with people. people. So once you've done that and do it over and over and over again, and the more times you do it, the more, the better you'll get at it. Mm -hmm. And then you'll have a chance of someone actually saying, do you know what? Can you try it on this property? Or oh, actually, I've got a landlord who's willing to try this. Or maybe I've got an auntie yeah. who's been struggling with their house. Maybe you can help with that, yeah. and you'll start yeah. finding opportunities coming. Yeah, of way. course. Yeah, and and that, that's like obviously you've been honest, you've been open up, and you told them what you do, yeah. the benefits to them, etc. So it's like I think that that's what creates like these 
kind of like win-win environment, Absolutely. you know? So, Absolutely, yeah. yeah. So to, to move on, I think we've got two more and I'm cautious of time. Yeah. Uh, we've got the setup. Yes. And uh, what was the last one? So it's the setup married with marketing. Marketing. And then the next one will be management and then scaling. Ah, okay, three more. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so and we you can, will we, be here the whole day. <laughs> we, can, we can be very rapid with the setup and marketing. Yeah, and I mean, like, yes, the setup and marketing. Great. Okay, cool. Uh-huh. Hit us with setup and so marketing. So set, setup and marketing is purely dependent on what it is that you're doing with the property, right? Okay. So yeah. whether it's an HMO, it's 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 um using it for services accommodation or yeah. Airbnb, so to speak, yeah. um, or you you're just setting it up for a standard rental or you're setting it up for supported living, social housing. Yeah, it depends yeah. what you're looking to do with the property. Yes. Right. But the reason I've married up setup and marketing is once you've acquired the property, you now have it. Yes. Right? You've got the keys. You've got the keys. And a lot of people will say, right, I'm going to set it up first. Yeah. <laughs> and once I finish setting it up, then I'll market it. Nah, right. Nah, nah. You want to do them both, both. at the same time. If anything, marketing is more important. Yeah, of course. Right? Of course. So uh, a lot of people will say, right, I've got my first service accommodation unit, yeah. right? I'm going to go to Ikea. I'm going to dress yeah, it shopping. up. You know, I'm going to start painting. <laughs> and you don't put yourself under pressure, right? Yeah. Until the money starts running out because you still have to pay your rent. Yeah, yeah of you course. You still have to pay the bills. Yeah. Until you actually finish setting that property up, you can't actually start making money, yeah. right? So what I recommend is... You actually start your marketing and the setup at the same time. Try to minimize your setup as quickly as you can. Yeah. What we tend to do is, especially for service accommodation, the last yeah. thing you do before the property goes live is the pictures. Pictures, right? yeah. So you so book. Um, you actually book, book the Adam photographer. Before, yeah. 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 <laughs> you book yeah, the photographer <laughs> quickly, right? And say, right, I've got the property today. The photographer will come in a week's time and yeah. book them in because they'll charge you anyway. Yeah. Right. Of course. So now you know I've only got a week. You get going, yeah. right? Yeah. Whereas people will say, right, I'll set it up first and then I'll call the photographer. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Have, have you broken my record yet for 48 hours set up? No. Oh, okay. that, that's ridiculous. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was just crazy. That's so not normal. So I set up a property in 48 hours. <laughs> that's just not normal. <laughs> it's not a record you're going to go out and break. 48 hours to set up a hours, property. Man. That is just crazy. Yeah. But that was impressive though. That was very yeah. impressive. <laughs> but yeah, ultimately, ultimately, that's part of your setup. Now, um, a lot of people see Airbnb, Booking.com and all those online travel agents as yeah. the only way to market. No, no. Yeah. And yeah. it's not the only way to market. Um, so obviously some people will be saying, well, how can I start marketing if I haven't finished setting up? Yeah. That's people that are thinking you can only market on Airbnb. Yeah. Right. So you can still market your property as you're setting it up. Yeah. Right. Yeah. You can go out and speak to the contractors that you're looking for. You can go out and speak to companies. Yeah. You can go out and actually speak to other SA operators to let them know, I've got a unit that I'm setting up yeah. right now. I should be done within X time. So some serviced accommodation operators have a good problem where they've got uh, guests in their properties and they're getting inquiries, inquiries about yeah. dates that are already booked, booked yeah right yeah so they can actually pass those bookings to someone else yes so if you tell other sa operators that yeah. i've got a property ready you might find that they might pr- pass you a guest yep yeah. yep yeah. before you set up yeah of course and then so you, you now have a good problem of i need to set it up quickly yeah no no that, that's actually a very very pro tip and a good thing to actually join so mm-hmm. Join the WhatsApp groups in your local area. Join the Facebook communities and uh, start networking with people, you know. And so obviously on setup as well, what I want to add is like, you, you just need, obviously once you've acquired the property, you need to know your your guest profile or your tenant profile. So if you're doing the service accommodation, Airbnb thing, you need to know, okay, am I attracting holiday makers, uh, contractors, uh, luxury guests? Where am I attracting, you know? So you, you don't want to set up your property <laughs> with uh, like, like you know, like to attract a wrong type of market because no matter how like the photographer is taking the pictures, it's not gonna hit. You know, that's like mm-hmm. on the uh-huh. marketing side. You know, you got <laughs> it's it's poor marketing because you're yeah. gonna be like uh, you, you've got the wrong audience. Absolutely, you know? you've you got want, the wrong you audience. You want to understand yeah. your clientele. You're absolutely right. Um, I, I see people who go for the. For the luxury market when their property is in a contractor market. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah, of course, like where the location of your property, you know. Exactly. So imagining you've got a property in Highfield and you're not (laughs) in Coventry, like (laughs) you're not like (laughs) five star luxury or you call your property luxury. 
in that in those kind of things. I, I'll see, place. you know, it's it's mm-hmm. it's yeah, it, it's not it's not. Yeah, I mean, I think on the setup part, it's like yeah, it's it's to me, it's very straightforward. And also, where people go wrong as well here is mm-hmm. budget. The budget. Yeah. So oh you 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 ex you excited. That's when you like you now blow the bank because you you want to buy artificial plants because you saw it on someone's listing. You want to buy that rug because you saw it on uh what's this IKEA or <laughs> 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 and all that. Then next minute, oh my god, I've spent this much. Stick to, to a budget. budget. Yeah. Stick to a budget. Um. So the when it when it comes to the budgeting aspect, yeah. um, what. What we tend to do, and I, I help with some of the mentees in starting this up, some of these are realistic. Some of them are not realistic. It depends what it is that you're doing, where you are. Yeah. So we have this this six to eight month rule, Yes. right? Which is once you've done your calculations at the start of how much money that property is going to make you, for yeah. example, then you want to get your money back within six to eight In months. months. Okay. Yeah. Now, the six to eight month rule can also go to 12 month rule, yeah. right? It's yeah. up to you, but you yeah. want to you want to have um, a good understanding of, right, this is how long it's going to take for my money to come back. Yeah. And you're yeah. using it based on, based on the monthly profit. So if yeah, you've calculated that I'm going to make 500 pounds a month from this house yeah. and I want my money to come back in six months, then yeah. you've got a total of three grand. Yes. Yeah. yeah of if course. you wanted to come back in 12 months, I've got a total of six grand. Okay. Yeah. And then you say it's my twelve month rule. Therefore, six thousand pounds is what I'm paying up front. That's your rent. That's your deposit. That's the cost of setting up. Yeah. And that's what I want to do. And that's your budget. Yeah. Right. And you want to know that if I go over this budget, that means my money is going to take longer to come back. Yeah. Right? It's, yeah. it's kind of a basic understanding of how you're coming up with the budget. Yeah. No. And, and that, that, that's actually a good a uh, good tip. So I was actually <clears throat> speaking to one of my mentees as well, and uh, uh, she was like, "Oh, I've." These things are expensive from uh, from the normal shops, brand new furniture, etc. Then I was like, look, have you looked for second hand products like on Facebook Marketplace? He's like, oh, for service accommodation, can you do that? I'm like, what? <laughs> <laughs> oh, like ninety or eighty percent of my stuff comes from Facebook Marketplace, uh-huh. and these will be like uh-huh. good, high quality furniture. But if you look at my listings now, you know you'll never guess which one uh-huh. is from Marketplace. You know, so it's like that's another thing. If you if you know, like you've got a tight budget, regardless of what market you're attracting, go mm-hmm. for like second hand furniture. You know, because people like when they buy things like for home after uh-huh. like two years or a year, they want to change something. Hundred percent. They want to change the sofa. Uh-huh. They want to change the coffee table. You know, so you can buy mm-hmm. that and put it in your Airbnb. They bought it four hundred pounds. You picking it up for fifty quid. Yeah. You yeah. know, so it's like, and you can actually. It's, yeah, that's a <laughs> <laughs> I, th- I think one of the things that, um, especially people who start out, they got they get hung up on, I wouldn't live in this place. Yeah, right. So they want to actually create their own home, and that's noble, and I like that as well to to yeah. a certain extent. But you want to come to a certain medium of understanding that this is actually a business. Yeah. Right. So there's your standard of what you would like if you were to live in there, but unfortunately yeah. you are not your customer. Yeah. Right. Yep. You want to understand your clientele. You want to understand the market. You don't necessarily want to actually build it for your standards because you are not the one who's going there. to live yeah, in that. For sure. For yeah. sure. So you want to want you want to go more for durability because yeah. you're gonna get people, different people coming in and out. You want yeah. to get something that will last long but you're still where the market is. You can go slightly above the market by all means. You can do quirky things so you can stand out, yep. but you don't want to go over the top. And if it's, especially if it's going to cost you a lot more no. because you can't, you can't justify that input in financially if you can't actually get anything higher, right? Yeah. There's no point in, we, we call it over-processing, yeah. right? If if you go yeah. and <laughs> if, if 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 the market is not asking for the fifth wheel in a car, don't put you put it in it because there, you yeah. can't sell you can't sell yeah. the car any more expensive. Yeah. Than so based on your yeah. target audience, benchmark what they really like. Benchmark other properties. So look at ten properties which you think okay, these properties are attracting contractors or luxury market. Look at and this is like in your location in your proximity and look at okay, they are offering A B C. Well, yeah. they don't even have like a hot tub in this co- yeah because it's contractors so remove that exactly. hot tub from your list because exactly. contractors <laughs> don't need that you know? <laughs> 
<laughs> what do they need that for? Uh, I've seen crazy lists. Like, I'm like so yeah, exactly. yeah. Uh, you know, they, but the justifications of people starting off, oh, you know, after work, they just want to soak oh in the water. Gosh. No, after work, they want to sleep. They want to go to bed. All they want is Netflix, a TV, and go to sleep. And literally, that's it. Basic stuff. So it's very important to understand your to understand your your clientele. Nah, 100%. very true. Very true. Uh-huh. So we're going back to number. So this is the fifth one, one. now, um, where we're going to be talking about management. Okay, okay. yeah, yeah. So the management element is the one that's um, interesting, right? Let's <laughs> call it interesting. Um, so we we spoke a lot at the start about the pain points of the lender, uh, the pain points of the vendor, the yeah. pain points of the landlord, the pain points of the estate agents and stuff like that. Yeah. Management covers a lot of pain points, points. Yeah. right? This is one of the reasons why um, some people who haven't started are thinking, well, if if you can make all of that money from someone else's house, why don't they do it themselves? So, right? yeah. And this is a question that I get a lot. The reason they don't <laughs> do it themselves is because the management aspect is That's painful. Another, yeah. right? It's another job on its, it's own. It's basically another yeah. job. Essentially, it's another job. And um, not many people are willing to do it because it's it's very annoying, very um, difficult at times. And a lot of landlords just don't want the pressure. They don't they don't need the pain for it. Yeah. So they just want their basic like um the basic rent of what they actually require and they just want it hands free because they're focusing on something else. Yeah. 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 So I mean obviously if you're doing like a rent to rent, yeah, mm-hmm. would you uh, advise for people to self manage? Like obviously I am a first time rent to renter. I've got zero property and I'm want, I want my first one. I've got my first one. Should I manage that property myself or should I get like a, an experienced management company uh, to run it off? Great what question. What advice would you give yeah, them? Yeah, great question. I would always recommend if you've got the time to manage yeah. it yourself, right? So manage it yourself, even if it's managing it yourself to start with. Yeah. So you have a good understanding of what it takes. You have a good understanding of what it means to manage a property. Yeah. So that at the time that you get to a point where you're ready to hand it over to a management company, you appreciate what it is that they're doing to start with and you understand what they're actually charging you for. Yeah. And also, you may be able to actually verify whether they're doing it correctly because you've done it on your own as well anyway. Yeah. Okay. So um, I know you know my story anyway, but we actually started, um, I started running properties myself until we got to maybe property number nine yeah. when it became just too much. Too much, Just yes. far too yes. much for one person to do. Mm-hmm. So then start building a team, team around yep. it and actually just get as much work taken away as possible. Possible, yeah. If you found yourself in a position where you've done the management yourself, the point that someone else comes to take some of that pain away, yeah. you'll find yourself really appreciative of the things that they're doing for you. Yes. Yeah. Yes. What I find is one of the some of the most difficult people to work with are the ones that don't have the appreciation of what you're doing. Do it. Yeah. Yeah. Very Where true. they're like, Well, this is supposed to be done. Have you done this? Yes. Have you done this? Have you done that? And and, and they're so demanding. Probably still booked. Yeah. It's, it's, the property is not booked, right? What what is it that you've done about the marketing? Yeah. You know, we we're not making the money that we're hoping for and stuff like that. Yeah. yeah. And you can tell certain people have those demands because they don't understand. Yes. They really don't. They're not in it. the trenches. Yeah. Yep. They they've never been in the trenches exactly. They've yep. not gone through a winter of oh. service accommodation, right? They don't get Brutal. it. Brutal. So I would I would recommend if you've got the time manage it yourself. Yep. Get to understand what it is that that the process requires. Yeah. And then you might find in that process there are things that you do very well that you like doing. Yes. And you want to hold on to those. Yes. And at the point that you are okay to start outsourcing, outsource the things that you don't like. Yeah. Right, that you don't really fancy. If you don't like cleaning, for example, yeah, get a cleaning company to do that for you. Yeah, right. And if you're comfortable making phone calls, the cold calls to clients to actually start get more bookings. Yeah, focus on that and just leave everything else to someone else. Yeah, yeah, right? for sure. So, so, so with that as well, Muzi doesn't say, "Oh, yeah, just find someone full time, etc." You no, know, like there are many tasks in the in the business. So. Mm-hmm. For example, you can get a, an assistant, virtual assistant in the Philippines or somewhere like to be taking one aspect of the business. So if you don't like the accounts, the receipts, etc., they can be focusing on that to say, look, for every time there's a booking, 
do a, a data entry on ABC, you know. Yeah. But if you don't like communicating with guests, like you can actually outsource that. I mean, Absolutely. like you know, so in like all that. So they once you start, you will see like, mm, no, I don't like this. Exactly. You know, I don't like that. So for us in, in our company, like uh, in terms of guest communication, we still do it because uh -huh. we realize when you outsource it. The people who outsourced it to, they used to come back and ask the same question. <laughs> oh, the guests say this. So it was like now a three-way loop. I'm like, nah, let's. But they do everything else, like in terms of data entry and all that. So once you're in the business as well, you will know, okay, cool. This is okay. This is not, you know. So it's like you learn on the management yeah. job as well. Yeah, absolutely. Mm. And it's the best way for it. I know we were jokingly saying it earlier on about jumping into the deep end. Yeah. This one is a good deep end diving. Of course, you know, yeah. You dive into the deep end for this one. Take on the property, manage it yourself, obviously, if you've got the time. And it's also a way to reduce your outgoings. So, yeah, of course. Okay? If, if you outsource the management, like a uh -huh. management so company, they they're going to charge you. A percentage yeah? fee. So yeah. you give your property to me, I'm going to charge you a commission. <laughs> of course. Right? Yeah. So because <laughs> that's the job that I'm doing it for. Yeah. And therefore your income is going to reduce. Just, yeah. Yeah. So you want to only get to that point when you're ready to give it away or when it's something that you genuinely cannot do anymore by yourself. Yeah. Um. So yeah, I would recommend that you, you, you try doing it yourself to start with. So as, as also as part of that management process that I'm talking about, we're talking the whole process. So we've predominantly spoken about service accommodation. Yeah. But we also have the concept of HMOs. Yes. Right? Where in your HMOs, you've got a tenant who has to come in. Yes. Right. So you've done your marketing. The tenants now said, right, we want to we want to move into these rooms. Yes. Right? Five of your tenants. You want to go through the entire process, the legal process of making sure that the tenant has everything that they need to be able to move in, right? You've yes. got your EPC certificates, your gas certificates, your how to rent guides, right? You want to get all of all, uh, all of your EICR certificates and then the tenancy agreement and make sure that they've got the paperwork that they require because as you know, you've got tenants yeah. rights at yeah, the moment. Of course, and so if you don't run that process correctly as a landlord, yeah, paperwork is oh, you're gonna be you're gonna be in trouble. Trouble, yeah. Right. So part of the man management is the process, the legal process of being able to actually get a pro uh, a tenant in. Yeah. It's the process from the point that your guest books. Yes. And your booking is confirmed. Damned. The whole process until they check out. Check out. Right? Yeah. Yep. You want to have a process fully. Um, set up so we know exactly what's required. Yeah. That's all part of management. Yeah. So in in the management process, you want to be writing processes. Yeah. You want your team in your business to understand exactly what's required. Yeah. And have a tick box exercise to say all of the things have been done correctly. Yes. And then keep that process running and improve on that process as you go along based yeah. on your experiences. Yeah. That's all part of management. Yeah. Now the the extra bit of this management side where yeah. you're writing these processes and they're fully done you want to build your business as if you're going to sell it yeah oh, right. build to sell there's build actually your a, business. A, yeah. a good book like about mm -hmm. uh building to sell like thinking on the mindset of selling exactly yeah. and this is not necessarily to say build your business so you can sell it yeah. you want to build it as if you're going to sell, sell it, it. Yeah. you may want to sell it that's completely up to yeah. you but if you're going to sell a business you want to sell the business with processes. Yeah. If it doesn't have processes, it's not as valuable because how are you doing what you're doing? How are you making the money yeah. that you're making? How is it actually working all the way from the, the, the education aspect that we're talking about all the way to the management process? Yeah. How exactly is it working, right? So you want to write those processes. Even if you're on your own, you want a process for everything that you're doing, either on a daily, on a weekly, on a monthly That's basis, very true. right? Yeah. You want a process that can be followed. <coughs> you want a situation where if someone were to join your business today mm -hmm. and they say, right, what do I need to do? You've got something to give them to say, this is a process that we follow, yep. right? Yep. So um, it's important as part of the management. Yeah. It's yeah. And no, I mean, like you hit the nail on the head. So... SOPs are very important, like standard operating procedures. Every business needs mm -hmm. it, you know, whether it's on a piece of paper, on a video, you know, you just yeah. need it, you know. So, but I recommend it like always because 
if, if if you've got a new someone new, you know, it's like it's easy just to say, look, this is how I've been working. Can you improve on, on it? Or yeah, absolutely. Can you, can you actually add on it as well? But like that that's a live document. You always be adding things on it, you know, because once people can't start coming into your service accommodation property, yep. you get feedback. And the, the people who give you feedback are the people who've stayed in there, uh, the guest. Yeah. You know, like I've never stayed in any of my Airbnbs. <laughs> I was actually thinking I've never stayed in any of, but like the amount of times we tweak them on, and all, all these things is because of the guests that said, oh, this is missing. You guys, I think you, you should consider uh, yeah. doing this. Oh, oh, I thought there'll be a coffee machine. I'm like, no, 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 don't worry. It's coming. We'll <laughs> you know, yeah. So it's all that kind of feedback. <laughs> You know, like, like, oh, a lot of people would appreciate X, X, Y, Z. Absolutely. So yeah, so the, all those things keep adding to your uh, SOPs. Mm -hmm. mm. Yes. Then you, uh, can, you can tell you're an engineer calling them SOPs. <laughs> like, I haven't heard that well, term well, since what I last. Call them? <laughs> yeah, it, SOPs. Yeah, yeah. It's like standard operating procedures. I hadn't heard that term in such a long time. <laughs> like <laughs> you're just taking me back to work. <laughs> <laughs> the call, yeah, sorry. <laughs> Maybe there's a technical term in the service it's just accommodation. Processes, processes. Guys. It's just processes. <laughs> SOPs. Oh my god. Okay, cool. So yeah, that, that's that's a good one uh, to cover mm -hmm. on the management. Yeah, but I feel like th those things. W once you get to that stage, it's like you you already winning. It's a matter of like you now improving. Mm -hmm. So always improve. You know, because people get a unit, uh, service accommodation or whatever, HMO, and mm -hmm. that's it. They just put yep. their hands up and think Manu is going to come. Nah, yeah. Nah. And that's not the case. And it's up until the money starts disappearing out of your account that you realize. That's when you, okay, yeah. There's I a, think I need to do something here. <laughs> there's a loophole in the system. <laughs> it's like something's not going on. Tabo said I'm going to be making money. It's not happening right now. And you start asking the questions and what it is that we need to do. But ultimately, the management process is where the money is made. Yeah. Okay, yeah. cool. So what's the last one? The last one is scaling. Okay, yeah. So scaling is where we're basically now, we do it again. Yeah, repeat right? the we're same again. process. So we, we've done our education, we've acquired the property, we've set it up and done the marketing. Yep. The people have come into the property. We actually set up all our processing on the part of the management, yep. right? So we've now got a foundation. Let's get another one. Yep. Right. Let's go acquire another one and throw it straight into the same processes yeah. that we've got. So what, what, you've, uh, what you've just said there is like, your recommendation is before you go for number two, uh, do you, does someone need to operate for like a certain period of time or like maybe after they've, when they're setting up, they should be looking at number two. How should they be mm -hmm. working? So that's, that's a good question. Yeah. So you want to get to management first, mm -hmm. right? Get to a point where you've managed the property. Mm -hmm. The timeline of how long you, you need to actually run this for is up to you. Yeah. Right, it's up to you. If you want to run the property for 12 months before you go secure another one, sometimes you don't even have a choice. Yeah. Sometimes the landlord that you found is happy with working with you. With you. Yeah. That whilst you're setting up, they tell you you've got a second property. property. Yeah. That's why our glass is a good problem. Yeah. Right. No, a good yeah. problem to have. It's a good okay. problem to have, but yeah. you want to be in a position where you've actually run the process, um, service accommodation, you've at least had one guest go all the way through yeah right and everything was fine and they say yes they give you a good review yeah, yeah. that means you at least have something that works yeah right nah, that's true. you can then start working on the on the on the on the you know and the improvement of it yeah. if you've had one essay and you're running it and the first guest the second and the third guest are not happy yeah don't go and get another one, right? <laughs> so there's something <laughs> there's, wrong in something's that. Something's not it, right in that process, in right? process, yeah. Get that process done. So you want to have at least a, a, a tick box of, right, at least one guest has gone through completely fine. Yeah. At least one tenant has moved into my HMO and they're happy. Something is going right to justify moving to the next thing. Yeah. But your, your SOPs, so to speak, yeah. will never be absolutely perfect. No, they nice. always have a window of opportunity. So you just need to try to make sure you're continuously improving them. But your tenant is happy. Your guests are happy. Yeah. Right. At least before you actually jump into another one. No, oh, man. This was the complete blueprint A to Z process <laughs> of how to get your first property. I mean, uh, uh, guys, I hope you enjoyed this uh this episode. And Moose is special, man. He's got the knowledge. He's got our link 
all his uh, contacts in the description below. And uh, by the way, before you go, um, I help people uh, get started in property. <coughs> so if you want to uh, start in property and get your first Airbnb property, there is a link in the description. But yeah, so click on it and uh, I'll see you in the inside. Moses, thank you so much for today, man. You're most you. welcome. And uh, so there were so many gems. I'll suggest if you've watched this till the end, you the real MVP. So <laughs> thank you. <laughs> Are there any closing it. remarks you want to give? Um, besides the fact that I, w I would like anyone and everyone who's watched this to mm. definitely subscribe and like this video and support Tower, who's been doing some amazing stuff, sharing content out here. Mm. And um, also just go out there and be the best version of yourself. And hopefully some of the stuff that we've shared today has yeah. helped you to do that. Yeah, you know what? Let's ask them. Do you want to see a part three? <laughs> 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 if you want to see a part three, put in the comments, you know, put in the comments what exactly you want to see on the part three. Because I know this guy, he can talk. Oh, my I, God. I think he should enter a talking competition. <laughs> I'll pass on that one. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I think, okay, put in the comment. If you request a part three, there will be a part three. And yeah, also put in the comment your biggest takeaways, etc. on this one. So... Thank you, guys. See you on the next one. Thank you. Bye.